Alright, update. Um, yeah, I fixed the leak. Uh, that's really hard to say. Alright, so I fixed the leak. It's not leaking at all. But uh, there is that loud humming noise that uh, is going on. Um, you can hear it pretty easily. That's much louder than normal. So what I think happened is um, when moving that motor around, maybe one of the brushes on the inside um, got moved a little bit. And that's what it's when it spins, it's hitting those brushes and see they're, like I said, out of whack or whatever. The other thing that I did find is the impeller does have some cracks in it. So I got to order a new impeller, put that on. If that fixes the sound, that'd be great. But otherwise, uh, I'm just going to have to order a new motor. I don't know. Which kind of stinks because, like, why is this all uh, breaking, you know? <sighs> but, yep. That's uh, that's the pool thing. At least I fixed the leak, but you know I got this loud, loud sound that it's like, all right, I can only run this thing during the day, so I don't piss people off at night. All right, so we got our new pump in that I ordered. Um, I didn't go with the exact replacement because I wanted to try something different, knowing that the motor I put in last the pump motor and only last not even a year so i was like that's crap um so i wanted to do a different setup this one's by aquastrong i got it off of amazon one and a half horsepower so the same power output um but this one has a built-in timer and it's got all this fun facts and stuff but yeah it says it's supposed to be easy to install, quiet operation. We're going to give it a try. Two mo 24 month limited warranty. We'll see what happens, you know. All right, so here's everything the kit came with. Looks like as long as you register it, you get an extra one year warranty. It's one for your placement, so that's nice. Manual, how to install it, how to do your connections. It comes with two inch or one and a half inch adapters, so that's cool because I think I need one and a half inch. I, I don't know until I take the other one apart. So it's good that it has both. And then we got grounding wire in case you don't got that. It's a 220, 230 setup. So I got this cord, which is good because the other one I had to, you know, use that liquid tape on because the, the wiring was getting all funky. So this is nice. Uh, this is an all-in-one unit. It Everything's together. So you got your, your basket and, you know, your, all this pump stuff's all together right there. Your motor, which I like that it has the, uh, that it has, uh, what is it called? The grill or whatever. The fins basically, so it can dissipate the heat better. It has the timer and everything, so you can run all your stuff however you want, how many hours you want to run it. So that's cool. What is this? And it's got a built-in fan. So I'm hoping that this guy will stay cooler and run better because of the, the fins and the fan and everything. So that's why, like, this is the pump motor right here. It's half the size of the other motor. So, yeah, I think this should be pretty interesting because it is that. I guess that's how you get away with it, though, if you have the extra fins and everything. But it's a pretty compact unit. So I'm curious to how this, how it's going to work. So today, I'm going to replace this bad pool pump. Pool pump motor is making a loud noise. Can you hear it? Yeah, it's pretty loud. Um, the bearing and going on it and that motor i installed september of 2023 it's not even a year old and it already is going 
So I got a whole new pump assembly to replace this old one with. All right, so I got a whole new new pump, all like everything, all this, all that, all's new that I got to install. So I got to take this whole thing apart, not just like you've seen me take from here over apart, but I actually will have to take this out, this out, and I'm not sure how I'm going to do it, but that's what I got to figure out because I got the, a whole new pump. Um, it has a built-in timer, everything like that. So it should be more efficient. It's going to be quieter. This one, I mean, even when it's not the bearing going bad on it, it's still a loud motor. So we're going to see how this works. I do have to change over these fittings to a different style where these would screw in. Um, this new one is opposite. It doesn't go in, it goes around. So it is it is a little bit of changeover, but we'll see how this works. But first things first, I gotta shut the power off, disconnect power and start pulling this thing all apart. And, not exactly sure how to do it so this will be interesting all right so i got the power shut off so go in here double check yep on off switch nothing so good there so now i got to release the pressure in the system and i'm going to do that by opening up the air valve that's just going to let all that water kind of move around a little bit and then It'll be a little easier to undo this and let the water out. I don't want to let the water out of the tank because I don't want to lose all that water. But here, you can hear it start to move. So now when I start undoing this, we're going to actually be able to uh, release that water a little easier. And I don't, I don't want to have to cut this thing apart i'd like to be able to just take it apart and i don't know you know you never know i mean realistically there's nothing wrong with this system except that it's old and this motor needs to be replaced Ooh, that's hot too um but the rest of the pump assembly is still good so who knows I don't know if that's something that they would take at, uh, what's it called? Habitat for Humanity? Probably not. I'll probably end up just tossing it out, but you never know. There's options. All right, there we go. All right, so now some of that water's coming out through there. If I pull this back, it'll really come out. So. That's what we're going to do. Oh, look at that. Oh, that sucker's hot. Jeez. Bare metal, bare black metal in Florida. Hot. Real hot. Okay. Now I can dis disconnect the power. So I can either disconnect it right from here or I can go in here. I'm not sure if I want to run my new power line through this or not. I, I gotta see. So I'll probably disconnect it from in here first. Disconnect the ground. I don't need to take this off. I just need to disconnect the power here. So all this stuff can stay together. So I don't need to unbolt that. I just gotta figure out how to unbolt that side and disconnect the pipe from here hopefully without wrecking stuff. So, get this ground off. There we go. Pop these boys off. And it sucks, because like this motor, this pump motor is, like it said, September of 23. And it already is gone. That stinks. I guess uh, A.O. Smith slash Century, now that Century owns them, they're not as good. They don't last like they used to. So that kind of sucks. Oh, 
Cougars. I did get a pump that is 220, so it's just same wiring hookup. Try to make things easier. Difficult part is gonna be adapting the connections. So that's where it's gonna be a little harder. But there we go, so now I gotta undo these wires. the whole dang screw off. Alright. Well, throw this booger back in. Okay. Now these guys, they just pull off. So then it's just a matter of straightening them out so they fit through this connection here. And then this guy, he, just take this too and just straighten it just so it's easier to pull through. This part's where it sucks because then you got to fit all these guys through this turn and that's where it kind of stinks so I'm just going to get all that undone off camera and pull this out. All right next step in this uh taking apart process is we got to undo these four bolts so then that will separate this skimmer can from the wet housing. And then hopefully I just have to spin and unscrew this here and here. I don't know. So still unknowns here, but I do know how to undo bolts. So we're going to do that right. first. Now that I got all four bolts undone, look at this does just turn. No, oh, now it ain't going to turn. Oh, there you go. See, it does turn. So the issue is, is where I need to turn it, this is in the way. So. I might have to get this one undone first and then I'll be able to turn that one. I don't know if this ain't, if this even gonna work, but that's what I gotta figure out is how to unscrew them so I can get them out without having to cut all these pipes because that would be nice. All right, so we got a couple of tools that we're gonna use to cut, cut this pipe here. I got my multi-purpose saw or I'm gonna use this guy whatever one works better so I brought them both figure this one can do the main cut and the other one's more like a cleanup cut one Well, besides the pump size difference, I mean, you can clearly see this is, you know, the wet, the wet housing and everything like that, just like that. So they're relatively the same size, but that motor is massively different. Um, this motor is a lot, a lot shorter in length, but it has the cooling um, ability. So I think that's an, a reason why it can be shorter, where this has to dissipate heat over this whole area. That one can dissipate it in a smaller area. Uh, so it's more compact. Hopefully that means it'll work. <laughs> but 
definitely having this timer versus our old timer mechanical, it wasn't really working anymore. So I, I don't know, I could take it apart and try to figure it out. I, it still works as a switch, an on off switch. So that's great um, because this, you know, has a power on off timer and all that stuff, but it's nice to have like an extra, you know, kill switch, you know. So the, another reason why I'm getting rid of this one besides the motor bearing is if you can see down in there the impellers cracked it's cracked in a couple places um, so that could be throwing it off as far as yeah you can see another crack there could be throwing off the um, well it's definitely not gonna be as efficient if it's cracked but it could also make it like you know do some weird stuff make weird noises so between getting a new motor, just the motor, and the impeller, that just those two parts was more money than that whole pump. That's the reason why I got that pump. And I got it on the Amazon Prime Day. And uh, so it was about $50 off its normal price. And that made it a lot cheaper than just buying those two parts and replacing those two parts. And that, that'll have a warranty where this one has like a one year manufacturer warranty and it didn't even last that long. And it's like, well, crap, you gonna, do I send that in and then they just repair it and then send it back? I don't know. Either way, that's a long time being down a pump. So we're gonna do this whole new one. And with this one's warranty and replacement, then that should be good. We should be good. But now, since this pump is smaller, we'll have a little bit more area. I do want to replace this whole wood piece. I want to take all this apart and redo it. I just don't know if I'm going to have time to do it in this video. Uh, I do want to remount that box, maybe even do a different box for it, honestly, because that box is kind of crap. So, yes, I would like to redo this surrounding area and give this some sun protection. That's the reason why... I had this old screen. I mean, it's all chewed up and whatnot, but it does offer a certain amount of UV sun protection by having it over all these. So that's the reason why you saw that netting on there. But yeah, I'd like to get this thing protected better so it'll hold up better. All right, so this is what I have to make work now. I have to find a piece to screw onto here and then cement to this piece. It's just a shorty deal, but yes, still one there. And then I'm gonna have to cut this probably down here, down here, and then bring this guy this way. This is gonna have to move for sure. So I was gonna move it anyways, but now it has to. So it's gonna come this way It'll be lower and then come around and then into that guy. So that's that's the plan. And then obviously wire it up. It's nice that that's all a nice wire. Because then I can, either I can run it through that wiring tube into the box. Or I could just run it straight into the box. I don't know what I'm going to do yet. I might run it through the tube. We'll see. Um, but I need to get this piping done for sure. This is where it's this is where it gets complicated because you're converting it from one setup to a totally different setup. What's nice though is that these guys screw on so you can undo it and then move it just like over here. So it's I don't know if that's just the more modern setup versus the old glue it in or screw it on, but that's what I'm working with. So I just gotta make these ends connect. That's the hard part. So, using my handy dandy uh, cobalt uh, two inch cutter. Yeah. Two and three eighths inch cutter. Cut all these guys out. Uh, I used the saw to cut this because it was so thick right there. So that got cut by the saw. But then I did this cut with this and the same with this cut. I decided I was gonna cut. It, it wouldn't work if I just did the attachment piece. 
So right now, these are all dry fitted. So angled up, partially coming down. Like I said, they're dry fitted, so they're not fully connected. And now I'm working on this one. I had to go back to the store to go just get this piece. So that kind of sucked. So I took back what I didn't use and then got that piece. So now I'm trying to get this piece to go to here. So that's what I'm working on right now. What are you doing? What do you think you're doing over here? Just going for a walk. Mind your own business. Where are you going? I had to disconnect this power box. So that's why that's over there. This is over here. I do want, like I said, I want to build an enclosure for this. I just, I don't got time to do it today. I want to get my pool running because that's more important. And then I'll build the enclosure. Now we'll see if it fits. So when I was at the store, I did get a five foot section because I wasn't sure how much I was going to need. And I figured when I dry fit, if it doesn't fit perfect, I have extra to recut. So it's kind of my thought is I'll recut this one slightly longer to make it perfect. I want, I want each fitting to be tight, very tight, like tiger, you know? see if this one fits better. I hope it does. I really do. fitted 100% good to go right, here comes the do not mess this up part so gotta cement that to that and then to that I already marked where I have to line up my lines so like that line will go there that's there 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 so I know where the shape needs to be so this one doesn't have any labels on it because this one goes all the way in and all the way into that one. That's why. But that's what we're doing right now it is starting to cement. And I'm using my purple primer with the uh, blue PVC cement. Um, 
it's supposed to be able to be for pools and stuff so i sure hope that's the case i mean it works good on my sprinkler system and i know that thing's pushing pressure so and i know this will push pressure so we'll see we will see I gotta get this real thick on this guy. Real thick. Okay. This will be interesting, to say the least. So I got all of this all cemented and screwed in and I lubed up the gaskets with my magic lube. Um, so now all I have to do is hook up the wire and then reattach these wires to there. So that's what I got left. And then we can prime it. I got to put water in it and then turn it on. So. Yeah, getting there. All right, so uh, I finished installing all the wiring and everything. It was already dark out and I had to use a headlamp, but I got everything done. Everything's working. I put tape around all the wires, anything that didn't have like the rubber boot around it. So I had to redo uh, the connections in this box for a couple of them where I disconnected it. So the three connections I redid. And, I mean, you can just hear it. This thing's quiet. Way quieter. And right now I have mine set to come on at noon, run for 12 hours, so it'll shut off at midnight. It's quiet, so it shouldn't be an issue where you hear it. It also then will have the jets on. So if the kids want to go sit on the stairs during the day, um, same with us at night. If we want to go swimming at night, then we got, you know, it's running. You can get take advantage of the jets. Um, so yeah, it's pretty simple. Turn the power on. You hit the timer button to however many hours you want to run and then just hit on. Now the, the trick to it is, is when do you want it to run? That's when you do that process. So if you want it to start at noon, you have to set it at noon. You can see my pressure still looks good. So no difference there. This is the same, this, this motor is slightly less power than that other one. That other one was a 1.65 horsepower and this is a 1.5. This one's way quieter. Definitely looks like it's in good shape. Um, all my connections are nice. So, and the best part is, is I can see inside and see how dirty this is versus the other one was all like you couldn't see inside. I also took these boxes off yesterday or I took this one, opened that one up and I redid the wiring in a lot of this because it was, it was not right. I got this timer now works. Um, even though I'm not going to use it because this has the digital built-in timer. But now it's basically like you have an on-off on switch here that you can shut the motor on and off. Or you can come here and there's an actual mechanical switch to shut power off to the motor. And yeah, I redid all the connections to make them all clean. I had one of the connections to the old pump was a little loose. So it might have not been getting the full amount of power, the full 220. So yeah, so I cleaned up the wiring. Same in here, the ground wires um, were connected, but the ground wire that feeds this box wasn't even connected. So I fixed that. So there's just a lot of like little wiring that it's like, well, what the heck? And I'm not even sure what all the wiring's for. 
I know at some point there, this might have had a solar setup on the roof for the pool because this is a solar box and it has a mechanical uh, switch that goes from the solar box. So at some point, I think it could it could cycle the water elsewhere. But yeah, so that's what my setup looks like now. And then I just got this guy that all I've done is I just put him just right over this. Oh, you can see my bonding wires hooked up as well. So yeah, I hooked up everything the way you're supposed to. Um, come on, get on there. And I just want this on here just to kind of give it that little bit extra covering so the sun doesn't just, you know, get at it, destroy it. Um, this way it still has the, the fan fully exposed so you can still get the airflow. And you got all the, the heat sink still able to dissipate the heat. But yeah, this will just keep the sun off of it. Plus then I still have this until I build my enclosure that I want to build around it. This is just going to provide that little bit extra covering from the sun, which, you know, blocks some UV. Ran the wire through here. So the power wire goes through there, this way. It's got some protection as well. Um, but then I also didn't want to like pull and shorten the wire in case I do need to like, for whatever reason, move this. It's super easy to disconnect now. All you do is you unscrew the two connections and this thing comes right out. So having a more modern pump has a lot of benefits as opposed to like doing a bunch of unbolting and whatnot. So yeah, so there we go. And that, that's pretty much, that's the setup. So it just gives it a little bit of protection from the sun by having that on there. But we still can dissipate the heat until I build. I'm going to do a whole new wall on it and uh, a wall on that side as well. And I want to do some sort of a roof to it just to protect it from the sun and the rain. And hopefully then it'll last longer. And now I just got to register this online and... Uh, It'll have a three-year warranty with a free replacement, so that's not a bad deal. Considering I was able to get a whole new pump for the price uh, for less than the old motor and the uh, impeller. So, and this one's way quieter too. It's super quiet compared to the other one. So there you go. That's my new pool pump. So I'm out in the garage. Um, doing some maintenance on the van. And I, I'm like, well, you know what? This is dirty, I'm gonna clean it. So I started wiping it down, right? With uh, the chemical guys. And, uh, but I'm like, you know what? Instead of wiping it down on here, let me just take it out. I'll completely wash it, apply this stuff, blah, blah, blah. So I go and I take, pop this thing off. To find a nest. What the hell? A little bugger started eating through there. Stealing some of the insides out. So now I'm going to clean this. I'm going to clean the top of this. Make that look neat. And uh, I'm going to clean up this nest. Maybe wipe down some of the other surfaces. I also, I'm just going to do all my fluid checks and whatnot. So this one's good. I can see that my, that's good. I'm gonna take out the air filter, clean that, which I did a couple months ago or last month. Yeah, I think I did it last month. I also changed the uh, cabin filter last month. So I'm just gonna take this out and just give it a nice cool blow down um, and then just wipe down everything and then I want to check oil level and if I can find it in here, the transmission level, which I don't know if Honda on this one actually has that. So I'm going to have to do a little bit of searching, see if I can find a, you know, a transmission dipstick. If not, I'm going to check the oil level. And then I'm also going to go through 
and check all my tire pressure. I got to get to the spare tire, which is actually located in the middle. I'll show you that. Um, and check that. And then just go through and make sure the vehicle has all of its emergency equipment. So, yeah. And if you haven't noticed, I did add... Ba-boom! That's on each side. So, give it a little more flair. It's my Veteran Edition 2022 Honda Odyssey minivan. So, yeah, we're going to do some cleaning. got the spare all the way up to 60 psi um if you didn't know on the honda odyssey your spare is actually in the middle of the van it goes right down in there along with the tire changing kit and it has this as a cover um so yeah that's where your spare tire goes so i gotta put that back in um it was about 20 pounds under 60 so in a year it lost 20 psi and these guys were about two pounds on each tire so all the tires now are set to their right psi so try to get as much fuel economy as possible by having them set right and then that's just a just in case i rather have it full than i'll be on the side of the road trying to fill it up because i do have a small compressor but I'd rather just have this filled. 